W is what we'll call the independent variable. And when you're integrating it an ODE with respect to this independent variable, you must have an initial condition and a final condition. It must be specified. So most commonly you're used to seeing your independent variable be something like time. But in this case, it's the distance along the reactor W. You'll see in another example tonight where that is the volume V. So the independent variable, we must specify both an initial condition and a final condition. The dependent variables are in this case X and Y. And for those, we've got the ODE equation as up there. So this is a nonlinear equation, F1 and F2. In terms of independent variable, uh, in terms of dependent variables, X and Y. So what we do is we create a vector of our dependent variables. And we send nodes into the software. So the software has two parts to it. It has the model specification, which is what's up here, and it has the ODE driver, which is just the part that does the numerical work for you. So you'll see if you click on that, that link, that if you use the MATLAB code or the Python code, that there's two parts to it. There's the driver and there's the model file. If you're using Polymath, Polymath does the work of the driver. You only have to specify the model. So that's why the Polymath codes always appear shorter on the course websites, because Polymath does the work of the, of the driver part already automatically. So let's just clarify that then. The driver this is the ODE integrator and it implements something like the Ronga Cutter 4 5 algorithm so you're familiar with the Ronga Cutter 4 5 algorithm or the Ronga Cutter 2 3 S algorithm this is for stiff systems, so we'll not often encounter stiff systems in the course, but we may. Yeah. Okay. So absolutely. If you click on this link, software for integrating ODEs, I link to when I taught three. Um, and there's a there's a tutorial on that. So the three report uh, course website when I taught it, I don't have video recordings. But I have the full set of solutions and assignments, solutions, everything, of course, PDFs, everything. So there's the ODE integrator that will is in the driver, and it does also the plot. And okay, so that's the purpose of the driver part. It will you call the driver, you tell it to integrate me by function, which you have to specify a message to the section, and you do the plot. The function. This contains the ODE itself. So its purpose is to describe the system. And it's usually in the form of a MATLAB function or a Python function. So it will be something like function, my model. And the first input will be the independent variables. And the second input is the dependent variable. The key issue here is that the in-depth input is a scalar. You only have one independent variable. In that case, shown up on the board, it's W. It's so what you're integrating with respect to. Dependent is a vector. So in the case where I'm integrating two ODEs, dx, dw, and dy, dw, the first element in that second input over there, dependent, will be x, and the second element will be y. So dependent comes in as a vector always. And then the function will do, the will write your code over here that gives you those ODEs. So again, on the tutorial website, I show you what this code looks like and how it should be structured in a clear manner. 
please, please, please copy and paste. For the first time, you are allowed to lift and copy without attribution. You do not need to give me any credit. Please use my template code that's on the course website because it's structured in a way that will work for every single problem in the manner that you need it to work. Okay? So please follow that and use that as a guide to solve all the problems in this course for all the assignments and for all the uh, and for the course project that's coming up in the future. Okay, so we will see an example of this coming up again tonight. I'll, I'll implement this all for you. We'll do it in polymath, so we won't focus on the driver section, we'll only focus on this modeling section, which is the important section. The driver section is bullet, uh, it's, it's just template code, it's the same code every time. To integrate and to plot. Integrate and plot will almost always be used with little modification. The function is going to change for every problem that you deal with, so I'm going to focus on this tonight. Any questions on that? Okay, so tomorrow's tutorial, um, if anyone is using Python, I will be there in the first few minutes to deal with any people working with Python because Vida, the, the TA, is comfortable with MATLAB, she's comfortable with um, Polymath, but she's not comfortable with Python. So I can help out anyone dealing with Python issues tomorrow morning before I have to do it. Okay, so let's take a look at the next section of this course. We're moving on now to still in the area of isothermal reactors, but we're going to just take a, a small detour and look at chapter 6. So this is in Proglet 2011. If you've got the newer copy or if you've got the older copy, it's chapter 4.7 on Depending on the version that you, that you have. So, up to now, what we've done is we've specified our rate expression as a function of conversion, pressure, and temperature. And even in chapter 5, we've been looking at the isothermal case where temperature is constant. We'll still consider that for, for a little while. That assumption will go away a few classes from now. So really, we've only been considering the case where our rate expression is a function of conversion and pressure. And we've set up our equation for that. We've also set up our design equation. So depending on the type of reactor we've dealt with, like PBR or packed uh, a pipe, or a CSTR or a batch reactor, we have our design equation. And that equation is a function of conversion, it's a function perhaps of the volume, it's a function perhaps of the catalyst weight, it's a function of the inlet flows, and other variables. But in general, the key is we've been focusing on conversion up to now. And the reason why that's worked so successfully is because we have chosen a species as our basis. So usually we've chosen this magical species A as our basis and we've expressed everything else with respect to A. And we've actually kind of ignored what goes on with PEC and, and the other components over there. Also, as a result of choosing A, when we talk about conversion S, conversion refers to the conversion of A, not to the conversion of any of the other species. X refers to conversion of A. Okay, now this is going to, this works well for most cases, but it starts to break apart when we deal with multiple reactions. So if I've got two, two reactions taking place in that system, what is my conversion now, x? Is it conversion with respect to a in one equation? And what if a doesn't appear in the second equation? How do I, how do I even work with that second 
chemical reaction if A doesn't take part in the, in the second chemical reaction. So for example, I might have A plus B going to C plus D, but then C and B react to form E. So conversion here refers to A. How can I even express the rate data and concentrations of those species in the second reaction. Conversion refers to only one basis species, A. If we have two reactions, we, we're stuck. We can't work with conversions in. The other assumption regarding uh, working with conversions is that things take place in one phase. But sometimes we'll have condensation or vaporization, and so we get phase changes occurring in our reactor. So those assumptions that we've used and worked with conversions and pressures don't hold anymore. Or another case where things will go wrong is if we're not working with that steady state. Then many of our assumptions that we've dealt with up to now fall away. We can't, we can't use the equations we've dealt with up to now. And there's another important situation that we're going to focus on tonight, and that's when we're looking at membrane reactors. When we're dealing with membrane reactors, we cannot work in terms of conversion. The, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go back to where we started. So in chapter one, we were dealing with we were dealing with flow rates and number of moles. So we dealt with the flow rates of the species, or we dealt in batch reactors with the number of moles of the species. It was only in chapter two that we moved to using conversions. So arguably in chapter two we simplified. We assumed we only have one, one reaction going on. We assumed no phase changes. We simplified matters and used conversion. What we're going to do in tonight's class is go back to our roots, where we started off in chapter one. We're going to go back to using flows of number of moles per second in flow-based systems, or if we're dealing with the batch reactor, we're going to just deal with number of moles per second. When phase changes occur, when we've got multiple reactions going on, all of that does not affect the derivations over here. So those situations can be dealt with. That's why chapter one is so phenomenally important and I spent about four or five classes on it. It's really the basis for this entire course. Once you can understand the material in chapter one, you can pretty much do anything in the rest of this course. So we're going to go back to that and we're going to look at that in an example on a membrane reactor. And this example is going to be complicated enough that we cannot integrate it analytically. We're going to have to use computer software to do the integration. And so we're going to end up where I started earlier in class and solve it numerically and solve it. So this is an example in the textbook, but it's modified somewhat. So let's take a look at membrane reactors. And the reason why membrane reactors are, are so successful in certain applications are the following. If we consider the example of taking butane, we dehydrogenate it to butene and hydrogen. Let's call this A going to B plus C. The issue with this reaction is that it has a very, very low equilibrium constant. So capital K. It is equal to the final concentration of B, the final concentration of C, over the, the concentration of A at equilibrium. And in this example, it's equal to 50 moles per meter, uh, sorry, 50 moles per meter cubed at 500 Kelvin. So, when we say that that's a problem, let's, what, let's take a look at what we mean by that. This value is very low. It implies that if the system works at fairly fast rates, 
at equilibrium were constrained by this equation up here on the board. <coughs> if I would like to produce more species C, in other words, I'd like to get a high concentration of C, the only way I'm, I'm fixed by this equation is, or well, one way to write it is that the conversion of concentration of A multiplied by KC is equal to B times C. So, what are some of the ways that I can increase the concentration of C? I'd like C to be a high value. Increase it. Sorry? Increase it. Decrease A. Increase. increase A. So add more reactants. So take more A multiplied by KC, but then what's going to happen over here? On the other side of the equation. Can I decrease B? Okay, so <laughs> is great. He was saying decrease B, but he says also I don't think I can. Can we do that? Maybe. Tina? Can you use a membrane? Can you use a membrane? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so here's the idea. So years ago people recognized that if we're constrained by equilibrium, let's consider a membrane. So here's my species A, B, and C. If I can create a membrane that allows only B to pass through, I take B out of the system, leaving C behind, I'm going to drive that equilibrium forward and create more C. So C is my desired compound, B is just a side product, but if I can take B out of the system, this equilibrium constant is fixed, I can push this over to the reactant side, to the right hand side. So for those of you that are not familiar with membranes and what they might look like, uh, let's just take a, I just got some examples here. So if you take 4M with me in a few years time, or next year, I should say. Um, so when, we, when I look at 4M here, We'll, we'll be taking a look at some membrane systems in the separations course, and this is what they would look like. It's a packed tube of fibers, and they're very, very tiny. We put the gas in the, in the center of, these, of each of these individual fibers, and permeating through that fiber would be species B. So there's a cross-sectional view of one of those fibers. Um, taking a look at that, it's very, very um, porous. Hydrogen passes through the membrane, Butene and butane stay and remain on the insides of that. And so what we learn about in, in that course, we'll, we'll learn about desalination, and there's an example of some desalination taking place. But for gases, it works just as well for gases as it does for liquids. And we learn about the equations that, that model those. So very simple diffusion equations that model that. Now, what I'll do tonight is I'll just summarize the equation on the board here. When you look at 4M, we'll go into a bit of a detail on some of those models. So I'm just looking here for, for some other pictures. So there's, there's another cross-sectional picture. This is the part that's actually doing the work. This is just the support of the membrane. So this doesn't really actually do any of the filtration. It's this solid part of here that's doing the separation step. Okay, so let's just turn that off then. And Resume back to this problem. So essentially that membrane, that very thin wall, is allowing B to permeate, keeping A and C on the interior, driving the equilibrium forward for us. So what we're going to model then here is that system. And because B is leaving the system and A and C are remaining behind, it's not appropriate for us to use conversion. All those stoichiometric tables that we derived earlier assume that A, B, and C remain in the system and move along the pipe at the same rate. Here what we're having is that B is leaving through the pipe. And so we need to modify our model to account for that. So if we look back at our models, back in chapter one, you can look up that we had the formula derived from the mole balance, DFA by DV is equal to RA. So that holds for species A. Species A stays on the interior of the membrane, or this, uh, you can see the membrane model as simply a plug flow reactor. 
here's my plug flow reactor coming in, and I've got this wall now that allows B to permeate and A to remain behind. So this is simply modeled as a plug flow reactor, but B can leave at multiple points. At the exit, we get the inlet, I've got A, B, and C coming in. At the exit, I've got A, B, and C leaving. But B is leaving at a, at a lower concentration than it would otherwise leave because it's also permeating through the walls. So my, my mole balance for species A, I can simply go back to chapter one and use that. That's still valid. My mole balance for species C is still valid. It's equal to RA, but I cannot write that equation down for B. I have to make some modifications to it. So let's take a look at the mole balance for species B. So if we consider, back as we did in chapter one, a small segment of the membrane, and that's the segment of size delta V, we can write that in minus out by flow, and then we've also got out coming out the sides by diffusion. So I have two outlet terms, outlet by flow, but I also have outlet by diffusion, so in minus out generation is equal to accumulation which is equal to zero at steady state. So if we take a look at that very small segment we can write that then as FB at the inlet minus FB the flow at V plus delta V minus the outlet, and I'll just lump this into a single term RV, which I'll talk about in a minute, times delta V, plus the rate of generation of V times the bottom. So this is a, a standard derivation back from chapter one. We, we did a mole balance, except the only difference is in this case I've got this outlet through outlet by diffusion. And what we can do is we can say as delta V tends to zero, we could write dFB by dB is equal to RB, the regular rates that we had before, but we get this additional term, minus capital RB. Now what is RB, capital RB? RB is moles of B per second per meter cubed. So it's simply the rate at which B diffuses out of the membrane. Okay, it has the same units as every other term in this expression. So DFB by dB is units of moles per second per unit volume. Reaction rate is moles per second per unit volume. Capital RB, the same deal, moles of B per second per unit volume. And what you can just simply note here is that you can read the more the more complex derivation is actually in Fogler, but in 4M3 we will show that RB, capital RB, is equal to or can be modeled as, I should say, a diffusion constant multiplied by the concentration. So the rate at which B diffuses out the reactor is proportional to its concentration in the reactor. So it's a simple concentration difference, a simple mass transfer expression over here. And it is K diff is simply your uh, lumped transfer coefficients and diffusion constant. 
So it's a property of the membrane and the bacteria of the gas itself. Requires that what's coming into the reactor leaves at steady state out the reactor again from the mass balance pattern. The fact that B is leaving along the reactor at different points and that the concentration of B is itself different at different points along the reactor and then that amount leaving is proportional to the concentration at the points along the reactor makes this a pretty complex problem. And conversion, using the conversion X is not going to be appropriate. We have to resort back to molar flows. Okay, so that's why these derivations here are all in terms of molar flows. The flow of A per unit time per unit volume. Flow of B per unit time per unit volume. And flow of C per unit time per unit volume. So that's what we're after here in this problem. And I state that in this problem, our aim here is just write this down. What are the molar flows at all points along the reactor? So at the entrance, I know what my flows are. They're FA0, FB0, FC0. I know that there are at the exit, but they're changing at every point along the reactor. What I'd like to do is plot the profile of FA, FB, and FC along the reactor from the entry point all the way to the exit. And I will call this V, the volume V. So we're going to go from V equals zero to V equals capital V at the exit. And we'd like to plot those profiles leaving the reactor. So I've made a good start here. I've got my flow rates of A, DFA, DFB, and DFC by DB. Okay, so notice here what, the, what I'm doing. I'm leading up to showing you how to set up your ODEs in the software. We've got my three independent variables, uh, three dependent variables, FA, FB, and FC. Those are the variables I'd like to plot. FA, FB, FC are my dependent variables. What's going to be my independent variable in this case? Volume. Volume. So dependent variables and volume V is my independent variable. So if I'm looking at setting this up, I've got exactly what I need to use the computer software. I've got DFA by DV, DFB by DV, and DFC by DV is equal to terms on the right-hand side. The rest of this problem in tonight's class is we're going to look at breaking down that right-hand side so we can write the computer software to develop what those profiles look like. So what's the first piece of information we need? 
pull out to, to address the right hand side of those three expressions. Repeat our initial and final conditions for volume. Okay, so let's put this down there. Um, so I, let's say V at zero is equal to zero. V at the final, let's put 0.4 meters cubed. So it's a 400 liter membrane. What else do I know? So let's write those down, FA naught at V equals naught. Um, let's use 15 moles per minute. And one thing that should be clear, if you read the solutions from the, from the midterm, is always move over and use SI units. So 15 moles per minute, let's express that in SI as 0.25 moles per second. Uh, let's say FB naught and FC naught are zero. So we're, we're taking A, decomposing it to B and C. We're not feeding any B and C into the reactor. So we've got my three dependent variables and initial conditions for the three. We always need that. For every dependent variable, it needs its own initial condition. The independent variable always needs two things, an independent, uh, initial condition and a final condition. So we're all set for the left-hand side of my expressions. Let's take a look now at our right-hand side. So for the right-hand side, we need these rates, Ra, Rb, and Rc. And we also need to know what Rb is in terms of these other variables. So just to erase this and make some space here. So in this case, we've got A going to B plus C with a reverse a forward rate constant K, a reverse constant K minus 1, and capital KC is equal to K1 divided by K minus 1. Okay, so I've got my rate expression for A. So RA, I can substitute it now. So this is minus R, I should say. Minus RA is KCA minus CC minus CC. Also, we know from stoichiometry chapter that minus RA over A is equal to RB over B is equal to RC over C. Well, that could simplify to say RB is equal to minus RA and RC is equal to minus RA. Is the equivalent. And let's make a note then that my rate constant k is given to me as 0 0.01 seconds to the minus 1. And capital KC was 50 moles per meter. Okay, so I've got RA, and I've got RC, and I've got RB. Um, when we hear like that, we, we assumed that it was elementary, or we were given the rates, the rate expression. So the forward re reaction rate and the reverse reaction rate are elementary reactions. So in terms of the right hand side, I've got RA, I've got RB, I've got RC. The only other piece of information I need is what is capital RB? Capital RB we had up there is equal to K diffusion times CV, and let's put that K diffusion is equal to 
0, 0, 0.005 seconds to the minus 1. What else do we need to specify? I've got, I seem to have all my constants. I've got my rate expressions. Is there anything else that's missing, perhaps? Trying to write this up in MATLAB or Polymath. One thing that's missing is what are the what are the concentrations C A, C B, and C C. So here we here we recognize I seem to have everything. I've got my constants K, got this capital K C. I only thing I'm missing is C A, C B, and C C. And also over here R B is equal to K diffusion times C B. So I, I've got C B occurring a second time over there. So I need to express my convert my concentrations in terms of some other variables, in terms of flows. So here we're going to go back to our flows and express my concentration in terms of flows. Up to now in the course, we've always tried to re-express my concentrations in terms of conversion. So we've written CA as, for example, CA naught 1 minus X. We can't do that anymore because we're moving away from conversions and going back to flows. So let's take a look at some, something we derived a little earlier on in the course. We derived that concentrations we derived, for example, the following that Cj is equal to Fj over Q. So the molar flow divided by the volumetric flow gave me my concentration. So if I can write those equations down, then I'm pretty much all set because now I've got my, my ODEs, DFA, in terms of constants and FA. So let's take a look at that. So let's just say recall. Um, and this was one, one evening we went through this pretty messy derivation. It comes from the ideal gas law that Q is equal to Q naught times FT over FT naught P naught over P T over T naught. So we derived that a while back. And if I substitute that in for Q, then I can simply write that CJ is equal to CT0, I'll talk about what CT0 is in, in a second, times FJ divided by FT multiplied by P over P naught T naught over T. where Ft is equal to Fa plus Fb plus Fc. And Ct0 is equal to P0 over Rt0. So for example, I could write CA, let's take this as an example here, yeah, I've got the equation for CJ, let's use A for J, CA would be written as CT0 multiplied by FA over the total flow FT, FT is simply the sum of FA, FB and FC multiplied by P over P naught and T naught over T. I could write that for A, for B, and for C. And that would require that I know my pressure and temperature and the initial temperature and initial pressure in the reactor. So what I'm going to do to simplify this example now is let's assume isothermal 
and no pressure drop along the membrane. So for this membrane system, a fiber, we're assuming it's a, it's a mild assumption that you've got constant pressure and constant temperature. Constant P and T. So that will simplify my expressions for the concentration somewhat. So if I had to write my expression in C A, I would be able to write C A is equal to C T naught times F A over F T. I'd be able to write C B is equal to C T naught F B over the total flow, and C C is equal to C T naught times F C. And F T here is equal to F A plus F B. So this pretty simple system with three species, we filled up two boards and I've erased them several times with multiple, multiple equations. No way we can possibly integrate this analytically. We've got exactly what we're looking for. Let me just uh, recap what we've done. We won't have time to solve it on, on the computer in the remaining time we've got available for this class, but let's just recap what we've done. I'll post the code and we'll look at it uh, in the next class. But essentially we've got EFA by DB is equal to RA. And RA we wrote as K CA minus CB CC divided by KC. Let me just make sure I've got my signs right. This is RA minus KCA minus CBCC KC. Here I've got CA <coughs> as CT0 FA over FT. Okay, and I've got the same for B and I've got the same for C. So I can substitute in this term over here for CA. And do the same for CB, CC, KC is a constant. CT0 is equal to P0 over RT0. So that's a constant as well. And FT is equal to an algebraic equation, FA plus FT plus FC. So really what I, what I have here is this is a really messy function of FA, FB, and FC, and a whole lot of constants. So DFA by DB is this very messy function of FA, FB, FC. You can show to yourself that DFB by DB is another messy function of FA, FB, and FC. And so finally, DFC by DB is a third messy function of FA. So that's what you type up into your into your model function in MATLAB or in Python or in, in Polygon. And you have the software do the numerical integration for you because you've got three ODEs, FA, FB, and FC, three dependent variables in terms of the three dependent variables and a whole lot of constants. So, what I'll do is I will post what the polymath, MATLAB, and Python code looks like on the course website tonight. But I highly recommend you do the following. You've got most of the problem written down. Try to write up the ODE model yourself and just compare it to the solution. We'll go through it in class on Wednesday.